people, how's it going? Welcome back to Lady White Lane. Hope you're doing good. Hope you're keeping safe and well. And hope you're having a really good Tuesday, wherever you are in the world. And whatever you are planning to get up to today. And you are all very welcome along to your Tottenham Hotspur versus Fulham debrief. Where Tottenham Hotspur picked up a huge three points last night at the lane against Marco Silva's Fulham. Which takes Tottenham Hotspur back top of the Premier League table. And as much as they won't admit it, opposition fans are bricking it. As much as they won't admit it, opposition fans are scared of this Tottenham Hotspur team. They're worried, they're concerned about what this Spurs team can achieve. They were expecting another season of just taking the mick out of Tottenham Hotspur, despite their own results, always looking at Tottenham Hotspur's result and performance for a good laugh on the weekend. Well, let me assure you, opposition fans, it's not going to be the same this season. And I'm sure you can see that with the performances and the results we are getting so far this season. As I say, they won't admit it, opposition fans. Arsenal fans won't admit it. Chelsea fans won't admit it. Liverpool fans won't admit it. But they're worried about how dangerous this Tottenham Hotspur team look and how professional of a performance it was from Spurs last night. I've seen us play better this season. Of course I have. The 5-2 against Burnley. The shackles were completely off. We took them apart. We battered them like a haddock down the local chip shop. Same with Manchester United. Although it was only 2-0, it could have been more. But last night, as I say, was a more calm and composed performance from Tottenham Hotspur. Both of our goals come from simple pressing moves, as I say. Two really good finishes. We defended really well. Romero and Mickey van den Ven were fantastic. Vicario made some really good saves. And we come away with a really professional win, a really professional performance, which gives us a huge three points that takes us back top of the league. And why I think a lot of opposition fans will be so scared of this Tottenham Hotspur team is because they're showing they can win in different ways. Even under Maurizio Pochettino and under attacking managers before, we'd have a game like we did the Burnley game where we take a team apart. But then the week later... If we had a game like the Sheffield United one, we'd crumble and we'd probably lose that 1-0. But this Tottenham Hotspur team feel different. They're showing they can win in different ways. They're showing when they're playing at their best, they can take teams apart. And even when they're not playing at their best, they can still pick up a huge three points. Now, I'm not saying last night was poor or the Sheffield United game were poor because the stats will tell you we were the better team by a country mile. But even when we're not at the same level as we are in other games where we're destroying teams... We're still getting good wins. We're still getting good results. And we showed that again yesterday. It wasn't our most amazing performance. It wasn't a poor performance as such. But we came away with a professional and comfortable 2-0 win. With a clean sheet and two good goals. Goes to show how good this Tottenham Hotspur team are right now. And a lot of that comes from manager Ange Postecoglou. Look at the state of a club we were last season. The pathetic results we were getting but it weren't necessarily the results that were frustrating me it was the performances and the team that just didn't look like they cared they really didn't look like they cared and as much as people criticize Antonio Conte that was one thing he had respect for the fans and he was constantly saying the team didn't care about the fans and for the respect of the fans they should perform better and he was absolutely spot on because the amount of performances last season they just didn't look like they cared Players were on the pitch just looking like they were waiting for that full-time whistle so they could collect their wages and go home to their nice comfy bed. Do you know what I mean? Whereas this season, the players look like they want to you know, go out there and pick up all three points. They look like they care. They're united as well. After scoring last season, they go and have a little huddle. You know, It, it was just, there was nothing in it last season. We'd go and score a big goal last season and the players didn't look like they really cared. They'd just have a little huddle, pat each other on the back. Whereas this season, as much as some of these celebrations are cringy, I'm enjoying seeing the team you know, come up with these different celebrations because it goes to show they're united. The team almost feel like a family. Hyung Min Sun said it in his post-match press conference. He goes, you know, teams come or players come off the bench and, you know, they want to put in a performance because we're almost like a family. They want to put in a performance to not let down the players that have got us to two goals beforehand. So, look, as I say, the way Ange Postecoglou has transformed and is transforming this Tottenham Hotspur team, it's just brilliant to watch. And I was expecting a similar, to, uh, a similar season to what Chelsea are having. Showing some good signs, putting in some good performances, but nowhere near ready to compete for anything. Whereas Ange Postecoglou Spurs are exceeding my expectations and I think exceeding everyone's expectations it seems like he's already instilled that way of playing and that style of football into the team every time they go out there to try and play that style of football 
it's working. And Postacoglu, ladies and gentlemen, what a manager. As I say, the state of the club last season finished eighth, playing horrendous football, sacked a manager, then sacked his assistant for his assistant. Ange comes in, changes the philosophy of the club, looks for exciting young players that he can develop and make better, starts playing exciting attacking football, develops the youth and focuses more on the youth, and we're seeing the benefits of that. All our youth teams are top of their respective leagues. Tottenham Hotspur are top of the league in two points clear. And as I say, do I think we'll win the league? Or be able to contend for the league? No, I don't, because I don't think we have the quality and depth, and I think we're one serious injury away from a top, uh, one serious injury for a top player away from being out of any potential title race. But do I think we can be in a title race next season? By God Almighty, I do. By God Almighty, I do. And Andrew Postecoglou, do I think, gets more depth in the positions that he has and in that team? I really think we can go on a charge for the Premier League title because we've shown that we can play beautiful football and and just shown how good of a manager he is. Two months, two Premier League Manager of the Month awards. And as I say, he breaks another record last night. The most points taken by a manager in the first nine games of their Premier League career. Goes to show, as I say, it's not even, oh, Andrew's made the greatest start to a Premier League ever than, than, than any manager. It's factual now. Andrew Postecoglou has made the greatest start to the pre- or m- made the greatest start as a manager in the Premier League, you know, it, it, it's just phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. The job that this man is doing at Spurs right now is absolutely fantastic. Long may it continue. And as I say, give us a couple more transfer windows. Let him get more depth and quality in that team. I think we can really go on a title charge next season. I do. What do I think is achievable for this season? Top four. I think we can get top four. And I think we're better than any other team that are contending for it, away from Arsenal, Liverpool and Manchester City. That's what I believe the top four will be right now. I think Manchester City, Arsenal, Liverpool and us. Manchester United, I've not been, uh, I've not been impressed with them. Even if they do kick on with players like Maguire and McTominay starting week in, week out, will they really be able to catch us or play better than us, get better results than us? I don't think so. Aston Villa, probably the one I'm most concerned about, but is it sustainable what they're doing right now? I'm not sure about that. Brighton, showing there's holes in that team, their defence isn't brilliant, I don't think they can contend for uh, for top four with us. Chelsea, looking a dangerous team, but have also shown some, uh, shown that they can gain poor results as well. I think we'll get top four, I really do, and I think that's achievable. And the fact we're even talking about top four right now, I wouldn't have expected before the season. I predicted us to finish sixth. A lot of Spurs fans and opposition fans were predicting us to finish mid-table, but as I say... And Postecoglou in this Spurs team are exceeding expectations and proving doubters wrong week in, week out. And I said it at the beginning of the video, I'll say it again. They won't admit it, but opposition fans are scared of this Tottenham Hotspur team because they're showing that they can win in different ways. They're showing that they can pick up three points in a professional three points when they're not at their best. And that's what's scaring opposition fans and making me and many other Spurs fans excited about this team. Look, we've talked about Andrew Postecoglou, the job he's done, him breaking another record, as I say, and even the stats will tell you that. Even the stats will tell you that. Stats after nine games, Tottenham Hotspur have the most shots in the Premier League. Tottenham Hotspur have had the most shots on target in the Premier League, the most final third passes, the most touches in the opposition box, the most take-ons attempted, and the most points. You don't just need to hear me saying it. There's the facts. There's the stats to back up what I'm saying about Andrew Postecoglou and Spurs being the best team so far this season in the Premier League. Because that's what Tottenham have been. They've been the most exciting to watch and statistically the best team so far in the Premier League. And long may it continue. Another man I want to talk about in today's video quick, Lino Vicario. I was one of the doubters of the transfer of Vicario to Tottenham Hotspur at the beginning of the season. And... That wasn't necessarily because I didn't like Vicario. It was more because I wanted David Rea. I thought David Rea was a more Premier League proven man- or ma- manager. I thought he was a more Premier League proven goalkeeper. I cannot get my words out today. I thought he was a better shot stopper. I thought we could play out from the back better. And I just wanted David Rea. And I was frustrated because it came across like Tottenham Hotspur didn't get the, their priority again. But we've learned since then that... Vicario was Ange's main man from the beginning. He was the guy that Ange Postecoglou wanted from the beginning. And would I swap him for David Raya now? No chance in hell in the words of Vince McMahon, as I say. I've said it week in, week out. Would I swap him for David Raya? 
And week in, week out, it's changed. Last week, I think I said, I'd probably swap him now. The week before that, I said, maybe I'd swap him now. Right now, I would swap David, or I would not swap David Rea for Greg Limeo Vicario. Because, I mean, Rea just looks shaky in that Arsenal team, doesn't he? I mean, against us, nearly gave it away for a goal a couple of times. Against Manchester City, looked a bit shaky in that first half. And on Saturday against Chelsea, as I say, what is his positioning? For that first goal, and was very, very lucky to get away with conceding another, where he passed it straight to uh, straight to Chelsea, and Jackson pretty much missed an open goal. So, would I swap it now? Not a chance. Not a chance. I would swap Vicario. Vicario is coming to this Spurs team, looked so professional, shown that he can play out from the back brilliantly, shown that he's a fantastic shot stopper. Statistically, as I say, he's got the best save ratio in the Premier League so far this season. I would not swap him for David Rea right now. I think Vicario looks a better keeper. I think he's he's dealt with the pressure of joining a big club much more than David Rea. And as I say, you can say, oh, the pressure of being in that Arsenal team. I'm not having it. David Rea's been in the Premier League. He's joined that Arsenal team. He can't deal with the pressure. He's crumbled like a digestive in a milky tea. Whereas Vicario's joined this Tottenham Hotspur team with even more pressure on him because a lot of fans wanted David Rea and looks so, so solid in that goal and in between our sticks. David Rea, as I say, I wouldn't change him right now for Vicario. I think Vicario's been fantastic. And again, last night, a different game if he doesn't make those two crucial saves. That Paulinho header, if that goes in, Fulham go 1-0 up. It's a different ball game, as I say. They put 10 men behind the ball and it's a lot harder to break them down. We've seen this season that we struggle against teams that completely sit back against us. So, could have been a very different game, but it's an absolutely brilliant save. Claws it out of the net, Vicario, as I say. And he's still under underappreciated. Everyone's talking about Ray or Ramsdale, which one's better. Everyone's talking about Edison and Allison. Put some respect on Vicario's name. Opposition fans especially, because this guy's looked absolutely outstanding. I know we all want to talk about Madison and Sonny. And yes, those two players have been absolutely superb. But Vicario's been so underappreciated so far this season by the mainstream media and by fan media. And I think it's wrong. The guy deserves more talk about him because he's been absolutely fantastic so far this season. As I say, that Paulinho header claws it out of the net. That goes in. It's a different game. Same as the um, same as the shot towards the end of the game. I believe it's in the, uh, about the 90th minute, as I say, where Fulham look like they're in on goal. It's a brilliant save and huge save for, from Vicario. If that goes in, it's 2-1. Tense last few minutes when it doesn't need to be. So props to, uh, to Vicario. What a performance. What a performance last night. And as I say, every performance he's put in so far this season has just been fantastic. It really has. Another man I want to talk about, Christian Romero. As I say, going very much under the radar when it comes to the mainstream media talking about Spurs and fan media talking about Spurs. Everyone's talking about Madison. Everyone's talking about Sonny. And I'll say it again, those players have been superb. But Romero this season, and I'll give, in my opinion, if I were to give player of the season so far, it would be him. The guys looked absolutely outstanding in that defence. And as I say, Ange Postecoglou, he's done a lot right. But one of his biggest accomplishments so far at Tottenham Hotspur has been changing Christian Romero around. And if you're a top manager who's going to rebuild a team, you do need to do that at times. You need to change around the players you've already got. And Romero last season, as I say, don't get me wrong, he was a good player. He won the World Cup. But at the same time, he was reckless at times. He was a liability at times. You could always rely on him getting the yellow card. Whereas this season, he's so calm, so composed and so precise with his challenging. Every single tackle that he makes, it seems right now like it's time to perfection. And even the one last night where Fulham are in on goal, he shows them the outside, times it perfectly, steals it off Fulham and we break away from there. He's brilliant with a ball at his feet. He looks so, so calm. Almost looks like he's just rolling it about, waiting for players to come to him at times. But then his pass after that is absolutely fantastic, as I say. His tackling, I would say one of the best tacklers in the Premier League right now. I really would. He's got the best tackling in the Premier League right now. I do. Yeah, not, not he's one of the best. In my opinion, he is the best tackler in the Premier League right now. I think some of the tackles he put in, or, you know, that he put in last night and in general has put in so far this season are just absolutely fantastic. The guy looks an absolute rock in that defence. So does Mickey van der Ven, who's looked superb. But as I say, the guy was so reckless. He was a bit of a liability. Every tackle this season seems like it's time to perfection. I believe he's only picked up like one or two yellow cards this season for Tottenham Hotspur. So it goes to show the guy's calmed down with the responsibility of being a vice-captain and being a leader in that team and that defence. And 
yeah, put a better player next to a good player, it will make him better. The fact that he, you know, I think one of the main reasons he was so frustrated and putting in these pathetic challenges last season and the season before was because he's playing next to players such as Eric Dyer and Davton Sanchez weekend. I mean, that would frustrate all of us, wouldn't it? And he's having to do everything himself. Whereas with Mickey Van Ven, he's got a quality player next to him who's not, I'm saying, making him better, but is turning him into the player that he is again. That top tier centre back. And when Leo Messi said he's up there with the best defenders in the world right now, I don't think you can argue with that. I think he's one of the best defenders right now in the Premier League. Him over Saliba all day long. I mean, look at the stats. They tell you that. It's a myth that Saliba is so clear of Christian Romero. Will Stewart and Tottenham away did a brilliant video on it. So, yeah, Christian Romero this season has been outstanding. <clears throat> and just completely transformed him as a player. What a performance by him. What a performance by him last night. What a performance, as I say. Another thing I do want to talk about in this video is Ange Postacoglu in the comments he came out with in his post-match press conference. And one of the things that I highlighted was that he said we were really poor in that second half. Now, in my opinion, we weren't at our best, but I don't think we were really poor. But I like the fact he's saying that because it goes to show the expectations are so high at Tottenham Hotspur. A comfortable 2-0 win will not do. We want to score three. We want to score four. We want to defend better. We want to be even more sharp. As I say, the expectations right now are through the roof for Tottenham Hotspur. And that is upping the level of the team and players. Brilliant post-match press conference from Ange Postecoglou. Everything this man touches right now turns to gold. He can't do no wrong as Tottenham Hotspur manager. Son, Madison, Romero, Quibier even last night. Absolutely fantastic. Madison as well. Yeah, great time to be a Tottenham Hotspur fan. It really is a great time to be a Tottenham Hotspur fan. Do I think we can contend for the league or win it? No, because I don't think we have the quality and depth. And I think we're a Kuti Romero or Van Den Ven or Madison or Hyunmin Sun injury away from collapsing. But do I think we can get top four? By all means. With one game a week, as I say, out of the Carabao Cup, when you look at the teams that are challenging us, Arsenal, Man City and Liverpool for those top four places, I think we will get it and I do think we can contend for it. But guys, comment your thoughts down below. For what, what, what do you think Tottenham Hotspur can achieve this season? If we go on to pick up three points at Crystal Palace, that changes a lot in my opinion. That would be a huge win. It doesn't matter the form they come into it. With Sellers Park, such a tough game, you know, to play and place to go. And especially on a Friday night as well. If we can get a win there, no matter the way we do it, that really would be something else. But guys, thank you for watching this video. Take care. Have a smashing Tuesday and week. And as always, common you Spurs, Enoch and Levy out. In Big Ange, we trust.